Why identification? Well, uh, it's a funny uh, title, I suppose, but who would you like to identify with, really? Uh, would you like to identify with a celebrity uh, in the arts? You know, there's these great, uh, great ones, you know, uh, uh, that arts covers a lot of things. Or there's the sportsman, you know, you might like to, to be you know, like them, you know. I think some folk have great, have young boys in the family who are, who are great runners and take part in some of those things. Uh, so there you are. Uh, why identification? Well, the Hosea, Joshua and Jesus uh, is really the same Hebrew root. Uh, Yahweh is salvation. Right. So there, there I'm sure great celebrities, you know. Isaiah in the south and Hosea in the north of the country. How does Hosea identify with Israel? Uh, identification then we're thinking of. You know. Israel is prosperous, but uh, spiritually bankrupt, sadly. And it's particularly thinking a bit of history and uh, some things that's happening in, uh, in the meantime uh, in Israel is centered around uh, a story uh, or uh, a, th that kind of thing. And so therefore it makes it quite, uh, quite interesting, you know, to think about. Uh, so there are, we're going to think tonight of two people uh, who identify with Israel. Uh, how do they identify? Uh, firstly, Hosea and his message. He had quite a difficult task to do, and I'm sure none of us had liked to be asked to, to do what uh, uh, Hosea has been called to do. Right, so Israel was called, of course, out of Egypt, verse 1. Uh, we see that there. It was God calling them, and God was doing them, and oh, he was uh, using uh, a... Uh, Moses, in Exodus, uh, we have it there. Then you shall say to Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord, Israel is my son, my firstborn. So I say to you, let my son go, that he may serve me. But if you refuse to let him go, indeed, I will kill your son, your firstborn. So that was a big warning for Pharaoh uh, and the Egyptians there, you know, uh, what uh, Moses had been asked by God to tell him. And uh, it, it was very important that God warns people. And there is so much warning about these things, you know. And so, but you see there, you see, he's calling us. And you see, we are his sons and daughters too, you see. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. And uh, that's so amazing, isn't it? It's a very close relationship. It's a very close, uh, you know, bond that God has uh, with us, with his people. Uh, it's a great relation to me. We have the father and son related, you know. Uh, so there it is. God, the father in heaven, uh, he, uh, you know, he has made us by creation, but then by adoption and calling us. So he's calling them out, you know, uh, and that, that is it. So there's also the husband and wife too, God's bride, you know. And, uh, and that's so, so amazing uh, as well, you see. So it's a very, again, it's this very close relationship, you know. It's not something, uh, you know, hard and, and that sort of thing, you know, and difficult. But it's, uh, it's this, this family relationship, you know, uh, that we see so much, maybe more. In the, so the heart of God was to restore a wayward wife. Uh, that was uh, a Hosea's wife, you know. And uh, Israel, of course, is his wife, you know. Uh, we, we thought already about, and some of you have maybe had the reading in the, uh, the uh, uh, Daily Bread, uh, thinking about uh, a Helen Roosevelt, a missionary in the Congo. And she uh, was uh, badly molested and treated by the... Uh, by the uh, uh, tribes, the, the ones who, who was trying to take over. And uh, she says how terrible it was. And uh, she, you know, what really uh, began to speak to her was that 
God was really her husband. This man says, oh, I'm your, I'm, I'm your wife now, I'm your husband. Uh, but she really, you know, she, she was afterwards, she was so um, put off about it all, but she was now, really, you know, thinking about God, her husband, in the spiritual sense, you know. Uh, and that was great, you know, for her. And that really got her over her, her terrible problem. So the heart of God to restore a wayward wife. Hosea is God's example in chapter 3, you know. He is a, a terrible example there, you know, of what uh, he did for God, you know. And the heart of God, in he, he revealed that, you know. See God's love, you see, for Israel. That was the great thing there in that chapter. And they loved their gods. And the reasons more, you know. Uh, interesting, that was the false gods. And, and they would, it uh, seems, uh, uh, the reasons was very important for them with their uh, uh, false worship. Right. And the, but they were called to return. They, they, they were called out and the call of the gospel, the call of God on them to return uh, from that old way. That was great that God was calling them in uh, 11 to, as they, that's the prophets, called them. So they, Israel, went from them. They turned their back on them, turned their back on what God said. They sacrificed to the Baals and burned incense to carved images. They just saw Baal, you see, as one who could, uh, that would provide rain and provide uh, the, the, grow, the crops and all that for them, you see. Uh, and, uh, and they burned incense to the carved images to the astronauts, you know. Uh, of course, it was all a waste of time because these couldn't hear or see or do anything for them, you know. Baal, he failed on, on Mount Carmel, you remember, to provide rain and fire. He, he, it was, the fire was to come down, that God would answer by fire. The God who answered by fire would be the God. But it was the God of Israel, the God of heaven, uh, that answered by fire uh, for uh, an answered Elijah's prayer. And so Baal... He failed there, you see. But they were called to repent. Right? In 6 1, come and let us return to the Lord, for he has torn. But he will heal us. He has stricken, but he will bind us up. How wonderful he says that God would do that for us and bless us and encourage us and, and help us, you know. Many people have had difficulties in their past life, uh, some of you from different countries and Sad situations, you know, and uh, and that's terrible, you know. That, but uh, a God can provide a better way. Then, how gracious and merciful God is! You see, to draw them back, that was the great thing to drawing them back again to Himself, to be His people, to be a special people. And out of them, uh, maybe not all of them, but out of them, there came a remnant, and a remnant returned by identification. How awesome! And absolutely wonderful, you see, how God is portrayed here. In verse 8, 11, 8, how can I give you up, Ephraim? He calls the, the northern kingdom Ephraim. How can I hand you over, Israel? My heart turns within thee. My sympathy is dark. There again is the heart of God. There is Israel. He's so uh, overcome by it all, you know. And in some places it talks about him weeping, you know, as well. Right. So, why identification? In verse 1, when Israel, of our reading, when Israel was a child, you know, just a child in Egypt, you know, like, like a child. They, in their young life, and their uh, many children, of course, they had that. It was a couple of million, they tell me, uh, people, of course. Uh, and then there were children. But when Israel was a child, I loved him. And then out of Egypt, I called my son. That's an interesting statement there. Out of Egypt, I called my son. <coughs> and how is that fulfilled, you know? It's fulfilled, first of all, for Israel. But it's, it's really fulfilled further than in God's son. Now, God's real son, you know, from heaven. Jesus, of course, identifies with Israel, you know. They, they, Jesus 
the Son of God, who was who came. All right. In Matthew two thirteen. Now when they had departed, behold, uh, and this is what this is in Matthew's gospel, of course. Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Oh, there's maybe a, an extra bit to read here. So could I ask someone, uh, maybe Dave there, I see him, a relaxing. You would like to read that, please? There's a, a couple of verses more, I think, there. 13 to 15. Thank you. But you have to unmute. Right. Thank you. Matthew 2, 13 to 15. Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I bring you word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Oh, sorry. Yeah. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I called my son. Uh, thank you, Dave. That's, that's uh, great, you know. But that is, of course, the fulfillment here of that passage in, in Hosea. Right, this is some of the things that the Course is encouraging us to do, to link it up with the New Testament and see uh, the, the teaching there is. So Jesus, of course, fulfilled his prophecy. That was great, wasn't it? And he identifies, of course, with Israel in the Exodus. That's an amazing thing, to identify with, oh, you know, God seen all that went through and he was so concerned about all that. But here Jesus identifies with that by going down into Egypt there. And Jesus fulfilled uh, typologically the idea of relieving what is meant, uh, sorry, no, reliving what is meant to be the Israelites in his life in Egypt, you see. So it wasn't easy for him, you see, and it was really worth them getting down there but they had, that kept him safe, you see, in the meantime, but he was still in, in, in a foreign country and kept there, you see, uh, but he, he lived and he, he, he felt for that and I'm sure another way of feeling for uh, the Israelites. Jesus, of course, is the, the new Israel, you know, he's, he's leading the way for the new Israel of God that's going to come out from the, uh, the Old Testament and New Testament, you know. And Hosea 6.6, 6, for I desire mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. And that has come up a few times, of course. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. And that's so wonderful, you see, and that is again the heart of God, the real concern he has and the real love he has for people. But you see, it comes across in, in the New Testament again, in Matthew 9.13. But go and learn what this means. He tells them, you know, uh, yeah, they were, they were, what they were going, what they were doing, and what they were talking and the criticizing, of course, uh, uh, disciples. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For it did not come, he says, to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. 